There is nothing like playing the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. Are you ready? Nothing in the world. Welcome to 50 years of Jazz Fest, everybody. All the best musicians from around the world. 7,000 musicians on 14 stages over eight days. Music and sounds and flavors. The air is thick, not with just humidity. It's thick with culture. The world's greatest, you know, backyard barbecue. You can go see 93 year old Dookie Chase, famous gumbo theater in your face. This is the real stuff. You could have been here, you could have been here. There is no such thing as separation of culture in New Orleans. It's all blended together. It's no wonder that jazz was born in this area because the people are so enthusiastic. New Orleans is nothing without its artists. It's just sinking ground, literally. After Katrina, we almost lost not only our city, but a way of life. So how do you begin to rebuild from below zero. No matter who comes, we have to put on Jazz Fest. The resurrection of spirit and will to live with great expression. All the New Orleans party people, now please! One of the most beautiful concert experiences I've ever had. The music was cleansing the city and just showing everything's gonna be all right. That's why I came here. There's a soul in this city. Life's to be enjoyed, not endured. And there's a lot of that. Who came to party? This can only happen in New Orleans. That's the magic of the festival. We're gonna go out there and jam. We'll see y'all out there tonight. Hey, Adam. Hey, Frank. <laughs> How are you? It's been a hectic day, but uh, I'm glad you were able to, to reschedule. It's, um, we, we keep losing the Wi-Fi, so forgive me if it goes away and we'll, we'll get right back in. Okay, no problem. I appreciate your mentioning that. And um, often it's, it's I, I deal with these types of things, not infrequently anyway, so, um, and it's, it's all worth it. I, you know, I don't know how many uh, fans you have, but not <laughs> many, but I've been trying to get you on for a long time. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm glad we connected finally. You think me too. Uh, I, we, you know, it started with the other side of the wind actually, because I had down, you know, I was getting behind it for years and been a friendly with Josh Carp and uh, so, and yeah. Morgan, Morgan Neville as well. And, and then I had Peter Bogdan, you know, Peter on, who I understand you go back with, <laughs> so, um, and then Philip and it, uh, or Philip, Philippe, I don't know how I, I can't remember, but anyway, and I'm like Frank Marshall's missing. Anyway, uh, and then there was of course the B the Bee Gees documentary too, which was fantastic. Well, thanks, thanks. It's it's great to be on the show. Yeah, um, and and I was so delighted. To say the least, to because you know I work here. I'm actually in a radio station where we play so many of the artists. Uh, this is my own podcast, which I've been doing for a long time. But I started working at a radio station in, in the Hudson Valley in New York, and um, uh, we play so many of the artists, so many of the the uh, that play that are staples at Jazz Fest. So it was just another whole sort of you know uh, dimension to my interest in it, you know. Sure. Where did yours sure. come from? Where did your connection to Jazz Fest begin? Well, um, it's it's a curious story because I, I grew up in a jazz family. My dad was a jazz guitarist, and so I've had music in my life, my whole life. Um, so I love music uh, as much as I love movies. So I love. It's great when I get to combine the two. Sure. And um, uh, I met uh, Quint Davis uh, after a concert in Denver after the Eagles and Jimmy Buffett. And we were sitting around and this was in 2018. And he said, you know, we well, ought to come to Jazz Fest. And I said, I I've always wanted to come to Jazz Fest. And he said, well, next year is our 50th anniversary. And, you know, we'd like to do something special. You know, we don't know what to do. Maybe we should 
commit, we should do this. We should, and I said, well, what about a documentary? Let's come and shoot it. And it was kind of that's, you know, being in the right place at the right time. And that was my first jazz fest. So I got a full dose. <laughs> oh, wow. It was your first time. Oh, that's amazing. So, and then of course, there was some sort of pandemic or something I've heard about. Yeah, I've which, heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> which sort of complicated, I guess, the timing of everything, right? A little bit. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you know, as you as you see in the movie, I mean, Jazz Fest has survived a lot of things and per persevered, and COVID finally stopped it for the first time in fifty years. Um, and it stopped us too. Uh, we were, um, you know, you remember those days when they said, oh, it'll only be two weeks and we'll be back. And, you know, um, right. So we were able to shoot and, and get it mostly cut. And then we had to go to this kind of situation to finish the film. Uh, but uh, my good friend, Zoom. Right. Yeah. Zoom meetings, all that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. And my good friends at Sony Pictures Classics promised me that they, would wait until we could see and hear this movie in a movie theater, which is the proper way to do it. Um, and so they've been great and we've been pushing back and pushing back. And finally, um, you know, people are going back to the movies and I'm thrilled because I, this is the kind of movie I think that's kind of the cure for COVID. Um, it's a hopeful, joyful celebration. Very well said, actually. Yeah, I agree with you. It's called Jazz Fest, a New Orleans story co-directed by Frank Marshall as well and Ryan Suffern. Want to make sure I get that out of the way. And as you mentioned, it's going to be in theaters. It's opening uh, May 13th in New York and LA. Um, and I, I don't know, the one the question I had, I was searching on the, uh, uh, through the Sony Classic, Pictures Classics website. Then I went and I looked at to make sure that which theaters it was playing in. And I saw that it, I actually plugged in New Orleans because and I was wondering, uh, it said it actually playing at where I wrote it down here, the, the pri I, I'm going to Britannia theater, the Britannia theater in, uh, um, and I wondered if that's already happened or did they have like a premiere a, a, or a, a advanced screenings there? Yeah, we had, uh, we had a premiere screening for uh, actually jazz fest, the, the 51st, uh, version of Jazz Fest was the last two weeks. It just I know. Sunday, and we had a special screening uh, for all the artists and anybody that wanted to come. And I'm pretty sure that we're going to come back to the screens there uh, eventually. We're going to slowly open out into as many screens as possible. It's going to be a busy summer. Yeah, I'm sure. Did you were you able to attend any of this past year? Or were you too busy? Uh, no, I got to. We had a we had the world premiere at South by Southwest last month. Yes, I know. I was able to go to that, and the amazing thing was seeing it, Adam, with an audience. It was uh, that was the best for me. I've been watching it on, on my computer screen for so long now, and to be there with the audience, and they were dancing in the aisles. That's and awesome. And hollering, and then I saw it last. Uh, a week ago in uh, in Westwood at the Landmark, uh, we had a screening and uh, again with an audience and it was it's it's just so great to see on that big screen, see it here. Right. When it's going to be on big screens in New York and L.A. And then, as you mentioned, hopefully what will happen is if we can get people to come, we'll, you know, get people that need to come out and support the film as well, because every for every ticket, it, it sort of helps to solidify more cities and towns will get the picture because you know and then which is the way it should be um uh, with a great documentary um or you know rock doc or film festival uh i'm sorry uh music festival documentary like this you know it's it is it's so if you the thing about jazz fest is you, no matter what your musical taste practically you're going to find a stage or you know endless amount of music there that you're going to love and and of course you do get maybe some stuff you didn't know about and new and discover new things there you know but did you i guess my wasn't specific enough did you get to any of the 51st jazz fest or were you too busy oh. with the no no yeah. i've been uh, yeah uh, unfortunately i i'm i'm right now on a cruise ship in, oh you uh, are in the bahamas and in, in palm beach <laughs> It's Jimmy Buffett's new cruise ship called the Margaritaville at Sea. 
and we're we're doing a little uh, variety show on on the ship. So I've been I've been uh, I wrote the show with Jimmy, and so I'm here putting it up. So I didn't. Wow. Get can you can you is he there with you? Can you can you? Uh... <laughs> well, then I would become a fit. He, he was actually he closed Jazz Fest on Sunday. So he was been there right. the last three days. He's, he's coming in, uh, and the ship launches on Thursday, and he will be here. Oh, I see. Okay, very good. Well, that's exciting. Um, and um, I, yeah, I should also mention Jimmy is an EP on the film, isn't he? Is he? Yeah. Yeah, yes. I thought so. And yeah. yeah, and you mentioned also one of the other executive producers. Um, I'm scrambling to to. Uh, find the name but you mentioned somebody else who I, I think was another one of the eps not that i guess it's that important to mention every ep on the film but the, you know i'm sure you had to re i'd like to mention my producer sean stewart who yes. wrangled all of this and, and you know the logistics on this shoot were were really complex and uh and also my editor uh martin singer uh who who had to have that rhythm to as well in a sure. musical sense to be able to write places to put in those sound bites. And you know, the, the city of New Orleans kind of became the glue for us um, and a character in the movie really. And so that's how we went in and out of the transitions, but we couldn't have done it without Martin. So you basically say, we're gonna do this documentary uh, with thousands and thousands of uh, people coming in. We have how many stages, 14? 14 so, stages. 14 yeah. stages. And okay, guys, go for it. And you just sort of sit back and you uh enjoy well, your 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 amazing food from New Orleans and Yeah, it was it was it was tough not to sneak out and get a beignet or a, you know a, <laughs> right. a sandwich or something. But yeah, the key was really Quint Davis. He he sat down with us and said, Well, here are the groups that have been here before. Here are the groups that we know we have some archival footage, and here are the new groups, because it's not just about looking back, it's also about looking forward. And so we tried to cover as many of those as possible, um, and uh, it was really with his guidance that was a, was a huge help, um, because you know otherwise we would have been just running around and not gotten what we wanted. Right, I guess a tremendous amount of pre-production was it's required to say the least to make this run as smoothly as possible. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and did you get yeah, a chance? I mean, it, it, Go ahead, please. No, it was a real team effort. You know, the, the, you know, we had, we had three camera crews and two uh, smaller units. And sometimes we would converge on the same stage and other times we would split up and Ryan would go one place and I would go the other and then we would do the interviews together. Um, so it, it was a true team effort, but you know, it's the thing I like about a documentary, the freedom that you have, and you don't know what you're going to, what direction you're going to go in or what you're going to end up with. Unlike my day job, which is completely planned out. We have a script. We know what we're shooting every day. It's down to the minute. Practically. I love the freedom of a documentary. Right. But there is a big difference say between what you did with jazz fest, which again, everybody's opening May 13th. Uh, in New York and LA, uh, and a documentary, say about uh, Maury Skibb, say, or the B Bee Gees, you know, where it's a very different type of uh, approach, obviously. Yeah, yeah, but the basic thing, it all comes down to the story. What's the heart of the story? And you know, in this case, I really think it's it was New Orleans, and you know, the sort of gumbo that is there of music and culture and history and yeah. heritage. And then with the Bee Gees, it was really a family affair. It was, you know, here are the brothers and what did they really, um, what was the heart of that story? And it was the songwriting. And so we find what the heart is of the story and then we shape the rest of the film around it. Well, that's nice to hear. And very, ant it's sort of the, you know, the opposite of cynical filmmaking, the way you describe it. So I appreciate that because so much filmmaking uh, with uh, many movies that are out that a lot of people don't have any trouble finding historically are these enormous budget movies, which, you know, even I'm not in any way 
demeaning the amount of entertainment values that many of them have, but heart is sometimes missing, you know, and what, what you get here. And, and, and I think another thing you find, you, you see is the incredible resilience of a city like New Orleans, you know, which has been through so much over the years. Yeah, the, it's the perseverance, it's the, the courage and the strength of the city and everybody pulling together. And it's, you know, it's like Quint Davis said, after Katrina. Quint happened, Davis, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Quint, yes. Um, you know, he said, you know, there are people in Washington that said, you know, don't rebuild it. Why rebuild it? And he said, we had to rebuild it. We had to come back. And that the 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 sign that things were going to be okay was Jazz Fest. And once people saw that Jazz Fest was back, they knew New Orleans was going to be okay. Right. Oh, that's right. It, it had to be an enormous thing. I mean, everybody, it's, the crowds are enormous, as people will see. Um, and um, the interviews... Um, of course you, you probably have a lot. I mean, I can't imagine how much footage you have, um, sort of, <laughs> <a lot>. uh, <laughs> yeah, any, any great, and then interviews that you can use and it just, you must have a tremendous amount of, of archive and, and, and yeah, there, uh, there were, you know, we had to make the choice, but also being the director, I get to choose the stuff I love and, uh, that's true. You know, like Sonny Landreth, I love that slide guitar. So we stayed there longer than you know, we might have, if it had been somebody different. I'm glad you brought Sonny Landreth up because he's one of the artists that we play here a lot at this radio station. It's called WKZE. And uh, Trombone Shorty is another. And, uh, you know, the the um, New Orleans uh, Preservation Hall Band, rather. Um, these are artists that we right. play all the time. We, we we play a lot of New Orleans-based art. Uh, the, of course, the Marsalis. Marsali? What is the proper term for that dynasty? <laughs> I know, Marcellus, but yeah, yeah, I was wondering what the plural was. <laughs> but, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And uh, of course, the Nevilles, another dynasty. Uh, uh, just incredible. Rock and Doopsy. Don't forget him. Who? Dwayne Doopsy. Oh, well, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Zydeco. Right. I mean, we were just playing Zydeco earlier as I'm, uh, I'm on the air with it. And I, I, so this, this really, this, I love how this particular film kind of converges with all, with everything that I'm interested in as well. I just, I just loved it. Um, and um, it's uh, again, it's directed, co-directed by you and um, Ryan Suffern. Thank you, Ryan. Um, and how did you split up? Uh, and I'll wind it down, Charlie, because I know you probably have a buffet. <laughs> Uh, with something to get to. Uh, <laughs> how did you guys split up duties, by the way? Well, we, we've worked together for a long time. Okay. Um, and, and you know, we kind of know, I mean, obviously, I I went and interviewed Jimmy and, and you know, he took pit, Pitbull. We kind of split it up. Um, <laughs> and and the kinds of music that we liked, you know, so it was, it was fun for us to do. It wasn't, it's not a job, you know, and we you know, I love what I do, Tom, and it's, it's, uh, sorry, Adam, and mm -hmm. I, uh, it's just, it, it's just so wonderful to be there with these musicians and these artists creating music and getting to then blend the filmmaking with the music. I, I couldn't be happier. So um, it was, uh, it was an extraordinary adventure for me. Um, okay. Uh, do you have, uh, can you maybe just as a, a um, I don't know, as a special uh, gift or something, maybe you can leak uh, some a news breaking story. Maybe if you have an up, another upcoming documentary that you've been thinking about making or that you might be making uh, already or something. Any news breaking items? I do have one. Um, we're going to do a, a documentary about the Beach Boys. Well, okay. That makes sense. Uh, unfortunately, you probably don't have any available archive footage of them <laughs> no there's nothing exists and you know and i don't know anything about that period either <laughs> <laughs> and now like yeah because there's been a couple um right on brian but yeah. we yeah, know but we went on the band and i grew up in newport beach and 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 you know i remember those days of surf music and dick dale and the rendezvous sure and yeah how you know that became this symbol be and actually before the beat the Beast Boys were, you know, they they kind of got into a competition. If you 
if yes, you, uh, Paul McCartney. I think yeah. Sergeant Pepper was a a reaction to uh, Pet Sounds, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, I know that yeah, Paul McCartney has you know uh, spoken ad nauseum about you know the influence of, of Brian. Uh, yeah, yeah, in, in his writing, and so there's there's a really great story there that hasn't been told. Are you going to direct it? Uh, I'm uh, I'm producing it. And, okay. Uh, we'll I understand. And it's a work in progress, I'm sure. Yeah. That sounds very complicated. Yeah, it's, you know, it's it, again, it's a journey of discovery. It's what I love right. about these jobs. You know, it's a, it, you don't know what turn you're going to make as you're going forward. You might go left when you think you're going to go right. Yes. And, you know, all these little treasures that we get to discover that take us in another direction. Uh, it, it's really exciting. The uh, sort of spontaneity and inspiration that comes as you talk to people and you find footage. Well, I uh, wish you much luck. Jazz Fest again, just so people know, again, it's opening May 13th in New York and L.A. And then it will roll out from there nationally in the coming weeks and months. So uh, go see it on the screen. It's co-directed by Frank Marshall and again, uh, Ryan Suffern. Thank you so much, um, really. And um, it's been a thrill to finally uh, have you on this podcast. So, Thanks, you know, Adam. hopefully we'll and do it again for with the Beach Boys documentary. I hope anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and if we want to do it and we can talk about other side of the wind, I'm happy to do it. So, oh, okay. Um, well, I didn't want, I, you know, I'm very kind of cautious about what I bring up. First of all, I don't want to piss off any publicists by talking about well, old I don't projects. Mean you now. Know, I mean later. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, I know. And I would definitely did, maybe say one thing about the other side of the wind just so I, I have the complete, you know, team now finally talking about that particular project. All these years later now, it's been out, everybody's seen it. Yeah, yeah, some distance well, it, from it. That was, uh, you know, I have a motto, never give up. And that was one uh, that, you know, took over 40 years to get done. But wow. it, was, it was, you know, it was really special to me because of Orson. And I, you know, I loved Orson. I love his movies. And it really needed to be finished. And we found a way to do it. And it's it just the right place and time. And you know, Ted Zarandos and Netflix came along and said, you know, this is movie history and we need to finish this film. And uh, and it was an adventure finishing it. So uh, I'm really proud of it. And uh, I, I hope that Orson would have been proud of it. I, I, we, you know, tried to do as much as we, Peter and I, remember him talking about the movie and what his wishes were. And we had a lot of guidance from him with cut sequences, sequences that he had left us. Uh, he wanted Michelle Legrand to score it and we got Michelle Legrand to score it. So um, again, it's a piece of, of cinema history that I'm happy we have now. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, all, right. all right, talk to you again soon. Enjoy the cruise and all the parrot heads um, <laughs> that you're... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> be hanging out with the next oh, week or so yeah all right all right thank, thank you very much yeah talk soon take, take care. care bye bye thank you thank you